although their numbers are relatively small, the planter aristocracy exercises great power and influence. All these sorts of arrangements that made possible the, uh, the power of the elite. If you're a judge, you're a judge for life, even if you serve for only six months, or you're a congressman for one term, and, uh, and then you're uh, the honorable so-and-so the rest of your life. And these honors had meaning in terms of your place in society. Honor has an even broader meaning among white male aristocrats. It represents a code of ethical behavior and bravery they are obligated to defend. Anything that challenges the dignity, the social stature, or the manhood of a white southern male is often the occasion for a duel. Fire! The idea was not to kill your opponent, but to demonstrate your willingness to die yourself in the name of your personal honor, the honor of your family, the honor of your community, or the honor of the group that surrounds you politically. The code, this cult of honor, governs almost every aspect of social interaction among the aristocracy. Mrs. Benjamin Perry was traveling to, to another location with her family and her servant. And a sudden brainstorm came up. And they happened to be right in front of the house of one of her husband's political opponents. And Mrs. Perry, of course, had to stop. And there was no way of moving on because of the dangers of floods and so on. So knocked on the door, and here she is, a lady in distress. And the, the gentleman welcomed her in in a very civil fashion. And she said, I know this is a great deal of trouble for you, but if you would only help us out. And uh, I think that it would only be fair if I gave you $3. And he accepted the, the, the money because this meant that there would be no further obligation because money exchanged in that fashion broke any kind of further connection. The same is true, of course, in gambling debts, that um, one had to pay one's gambling debts before you paid your tailor. And how do women fare within this highly structured social order? You would think that the patriarchal system is being so male-oriented that women don't have much of a role. That's not true. Uh, they actually really, I think, in a way, controlled the social order. They were the ones who decided who could come in the house and who couldn't. Why, oh, we don't want uh, Mr. Hunter over here. Why, he's a slave trader. And furthermore, they could also control their husbands by saying, are you a coward? Are you a weakling? Are you what you seem to be? So they always could hold up the male ideal against their husbands. The typical white southerner, however, is not a great planter and slaveholder, but a modest farmer. No doubt some non-slave-owning whites resent the planter elite, but overt opposition is rare. Over towards the Blue Ridge Range, there was a white belt, as one historian puts it, as well as a black belt, where the planters would have to be deferential to their betters for several reasons. One is, because they had the money, and you need a but to borrow something, you've got to borrow a cow, you've got to borrow some cash to, to get your crop in, but you're beholden to the individual who gives you that. Because the South had very few banks. You couldn't go to the bank and get a loan. It's very difficult to feel a uh, rabid class hatred, for example, to someone who uh, helps sell the one bale of cotton that you produce along with his 300 bales who buys hay from you so that he can keep his fields in cotton and still feed his livestock, who married your third cousin twice removed. It's very difficult to work up a little class hatred against a person like that with whom you feel some kinship and neighborly bonds. However poor and miserable these white southerners may be, they can still look down on the black population of the region and feel a bond with their fellow whites.